So in this example, I want to show you guys how to use Noodle on this run cycle in order to give it some overlap. So if you look at this run cycle, this cheetah here done by Jamie Chung, you can see that the tail has no overlap whatsoever. And that's the perfect opportunity for Noodle to do its thing and, and get some free overlap for us. So if, if I just play this back, you can see there's no real information on this tail and Noodle needs a decent amount of information in order to do the overlapping action, right? So right now the tail is just kind of hanging out. It's, it's just kind of doing whatever the hips are doing. It's just translating through space. So if I come to another camera, you can see that there's not too much rotation animation. And we need more rotation information in order for Noodle to correctly overlap the tail. So now I'll come back to the shot camera. If I show you how it would look without any additional tweaks, if I just load the controls in and make sure that my frame range is correct and I overlap setup, Noodle will do its thing and create the overlapping setup. But because we didn't add any additional information, it's not going to have great results. As you can see here, it's it's sort of just being dragged back in space. So I can explain what these little particles here do. I have n particles shown, and these particles kind of display what the physics system is doing. So the physics system is using these different points in space for Noodle to kind of generate its overlap. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of overlap happening, but it's not really, it doesn't really look accurate, it doesn't really look good. And I can reduce the amount of time offset to reduce the distance between these. So if I go to zero time offset, for example, you can see that these particles remain more or less where the tail controls are. But this isn't really helpful for us because we don't really have enough information on the tail. So no matter what we do with these settings, it's not going to generate a nice looking result. But what we can do is if I undo this now, what I want to do is just add a tiny bit of rotation information onto the base of the tail. That'll be enough for Noodle to do its thing in regards to creating overlapping animation for us. So if I come and I key this rotate, and I'm going to come back to the original cycle, which is one to 13. So that's what the, uh, the repeating cycle is. You see one and 13 are more or less the same and everything in between is the cycle. So I want to just add a tiny bit of animation. Maybe I'll start the tail a little bit high up like this. I'll make sure the end frame is the same so that it cycles nicely. And then I'll just add a tiny bit of rotation onto this tail. And this should be enough for Noodle to already do its thing. And one last thing to do is to make sure that we cycle our keys so that they, they loop over time. I just want to make this curve a little bit nicer so that we have a nice looking cycle. That's probably good enough. So now if I do this again, and I already have these controls loaded in from before, and I can just reset my timeline to 100, make sure that my frame range is accurate to what I want to generate the setup for, and I'll overlap setup. One thing to note is that Noodle, because it's a physics simulation, works best if there's some run up. So if you look at the beginning, you can see that there's a little bit of run up before Noodle stabilizes. So you kind of want to just take that into account that you you do want some additional frames ahead in order for Noodle to do its thing. But now if I come and I tweak this back down to 0.4 and I play back, you can already see that it's a much better result than we had before without even tweaking any of these values. So all I did was reduce the time offset to make sure that the, the angle to these particles aren't as acute. So these controls would be more or less trying to use the, these particles to point out. So 
you want to make sure they're relatively close to what the actual controls are. And because she's running through space, as you can see the origin point moving away, she's running through space, so she's kind of leaving these particles behind. If you were to do this run cycle in the spot, you would probably use some slightly different settings in order to achieve the overlapping animation, but because she's running through space, you want to just take into account that you want to minimize that space. So now maybe I'll just reduce the amount of base stiffness, but increase the amount of overall stiffness. And we'll see how this looks. So you can see it's giving a little bit more of a stiffer tail. So that's, it's a kind of a different result. I actually don't mind this being at 0.5. I think that's kind of nice. And you could potentially reduce the amount of time offset even more so. Point three. It's not quite getting us the results that we want, so maybe let's try to reduce this even more. That's an interesting result. So you can see you can get quite a lot of different results just by messing around with these settings. I think I like the original, which is this. It kind of gives like a nice, nice kind of a loose tail, not too stiff, uh, but not too floppy. So I kind of like this. And when you're happy with it, you can just bake down the setup and Noodle will bake the information back down to the controls. And you can see the, the animation information right here. And as I was saying before, you can see that it takes a while before Noodle stabilizes. So if I look at these keys here, they look like a little bit different than the keys that you see up around the end portion. And that's because this is the run up portion and Noodle's going from a more or less a static position um, before it begins to calculate the physics uh, portion. So the physics portion kind of needs a run up just like any other physics simulation. So always uh, take that into account when you're when you're doing this animation. You can, if you wanted to, start in the negative frames and then bake the setup so that it uh, has some run up. You just need to make sure you update your frame range so that it is matching whatever your timeline is. And that's that's all there is to it. And you can see that yeah, we have some free overlapping animation. Didn't take all that long. All I had to do was animate one control at the base. Thank you.